In this video, I'll be showing you how to do a VLOOKUP in Excel. Coming up. Hey, I'm Vanessa, and this is Data Savvy TV, a data analytics channel where I talk about topics like Excel, databases, SQL, the R programming language, data mining, statistics, data visualization and lots of other things in the data analytics world. So if you're interested in any of that, consider subscribing below. So let's get to this first video in my VLOOKUP tutorial series, how to do a VLOOKUP in Excel. So this example is inspired by John Ancampora, who is a Microsoft MVP. He has a blog called Excel Campus. And here's the URL. I'm going to also link this in the YouTube description below. V lookup, the V stands for vertical. So when you're using a V lookup, you're literally looking down a vertical list, or you could also think of this as one column in a table. And you're looking down the first column of information to try to find an item. So column number one, you're looking for let's say a cafe latte, and you want to know how much a tall cafe latte costs, which is found in column number two. So we're first going to find cafe latte down this <clears throat> first column and then come across to find the price of a tall, which is 295 found in column two. So in Excel, what this looks like we have the same menu here with the column numbers, but typically you wouldn't um, have this first row and look more just like this, just like the menu looked in um, the photo. I'm just going to hit Control Z to make that first row appear again. Control Z is for undo. Over here, I have kind of the breakdown of what a VLOOKUP is so here's kind of the technical terms that um, Excel uses for VLOOKUP, which is not very fun. Um, doesn't have a ton of meaning. Lookup value, table array, column index number, and range lookup. And essentially, what these things mean, a lookup value is just what you're looking for. Table array is where you want to find that information. A column index number is where the information that you want to bring back is found. And then this range lookup, it wants to know if you want an exact match or a near match. And it's indicated by either zero for exact or one for near match. So in our scenario here, what we want is the drink. Where is in this menu? And we either want size of the drink or really price or how many calories that um, particular drink has. And we want an exact match because I want, um, if, if I wanted to look up cafe latte, I don't, I want to bring back cafe latte and not cafe mocha, which is, would be close, but not exact. So, one really nice feature with Excel to build formulas is this little insert function button right here. It kind of helps you step through formulas, and when you're learning a new one, it's very helpful. So we're going to start with this. Um, search for a function in this box, you would just type the lookup. I've searched for it in the past, so that's why I have it here in my list below but you would type it here, hit go, and then you would get a list of um, different functions that match or close match <laughs> to what you've searched for. So we're gonna select VLOOKUP. And here you see the same arguments. For our lookup value, I'm gonna use, or I'm gonna look up Cafe Latte the table array or our menu location. Our menu is here in cell A2 all the way through cell G11, which you can see up here in the formula bar as well. 
the column index number, I want to know how much a tall is. So that's found in column number two. And I want an exact match, which down here it says you can write false, but zero is the same thing. So let me show you. False shows false here on the right, or if you type in a zero, also false. If you typed in a one, changes to true. So that's just a little shortcut so you don't have to always type out the word true and false. So I'm going to click OK. I have the formula built here. You can also see it up here. And we can see that a tall cafe latte is 295. So now I'm going to look up the price of a grande cappuccino. But this time, I'm going to go ahead and type it out. So I'm going to hit the equal sign and start to type the lookup. Um, and since there's only one function that starts with VL, you can just hit the tab key. And that way, you don't have to type the rest of the word, right? It's just little things to help save some time. So the lookup value this time is going to be cappuccino. I'm going to type in a comma. And you can see as I build this, um, the current argument that I'm working on becomes bold. So if I remove the comma, OK, I'm telling Excel what the lookup value is. Now after I add the column, the next argument is the table array. So I'm going to go up here and select that. Then I'm going to insert another column. And this time, the column for grande in this array is 1, 2, 3, 4. It's the fourth column. So I'm going to put in the number 4. And then here you have true or false. You can go ahead and double click on false if you'd like or you can type a zero, which works the same way. But I'm gonna go ahead and select false. And then close parentheses and hit enter. So for cappuccino, a grande is 365, which you can see is right here in column four. So really the main things to remember is that whenever you're using a VLOOKUP, the first column is always going to be where you're finding the what. And um, in a table array, say for some reason you just wanted to know the calories, look up the cal calories of a tall and you want to know, okay, I want a tall drink that's um, 150 calories. Um, you could look up the 150 but you wouldn't be able to grab the name of the drink because it's to the left. And um, what happens here is that this is no longer column three. This becomes, if this is your new array here, this becomes column one. Then this is two, this is three, this is four, and this is five. So if I wanted to know the drink that's 150 calories. And this is my array. If I try to pick a column in next number back here, it's just not going to happen. Like, if I put in a zero, I am going to get back an error. If I try to do something like, I don't know, like a negative one to kind of, or like a negative two to go backwards, that's not going to work either. It's only going to look left to right. There is a way to look in either direction, and that's called, um, well, it's a combination of two functions, index and match. But that's for another video. <laughs> Hey, thanks for joining me here on Data Savvy TV. If this was valuable to you, definitely hit up that like button, consider subscribing, and share the link below with someone who would benefit from this video as well. Also, please stay tuned for additional installations of this VLOOKUP series. There will be four videos in total, so definitely make sure you catch those other 
videos. Until next time, keep learning, keep building up your skills, and stay pumped about data analytics. See you again soon. How to do VLOOKUP in Excel, a VLOOKUP tutorial series. Okay. So what exactly is a VLOOKUP in Excel and how do you do one? <laughs> All right.